Welcome to the First Baptist Church of St. Paul. Today is March 20th, 2022. There are a few brief announcements. Tuesday, there will be a Bible study in English at 10 a.m. And Wednesday at 6.30, a Karen Prayer and Bible Study. And Friday at 5, Karen Youth Bible Study. And 6 o'clock, there is citizenship class. If you or someone you know is uh, seeking American citizenship, please take advantage of this. It is offered by the Hmong Cultural Center uh, here at First Baptist Church. It's free, and it's a great preparation for that um, exam. Trustees will be meeting March 29th upcoming. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Holy God, we come here today because we seek you, knowing that every morning, every day, every moment, you are with us. We come because we hunger for you, who feeds us with hope and replaces our emptiness with grace. We come because we thirst for the Spirit, who fills our yearning for peace and leads us in the way. We come to you empty. Fill us with your word. Amen. Good morning. Will you please join us in singing beautiful things and blessed be your name.
Offering us to a feast. That's right. No, 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 it's okay. I, I, yeah, I'm sure. It might look. I, okay, all right. Let's, let's move it to our partners. Okay. Will you please join us in the responsive reading? Listen to the invitation God gives you today. God is offering us a feast. God offers to all of us the abundance of God's love. How we have longed for hope and peace. How we have longed for joy and love. God fills with good things. God blesses us and heals us. Praise, Praise be, be to, to God. God. Amen. God of faithful love, Holy One of Israel, who has been revealed in the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, 
we worship you. We praise you. O great provider, we humbly come before you because you are our Lord. We are hungry and thirsty for your presence, for your power and word. We know that your heart is breaking as you witness the cruel and suffering of so many of your innocent children, men and women in Ukraine. Lord, we pray for your intervention in that horrific event. Grant the leaders of the world the wisdom and courage and the hard-working process of peace. Strengthen, resolve, and soften hearts. We pray that you will do what needs to be done and that we will be your partners in your will being done on earth as it is in heaven. And for those who have suffered for years in Burma and in refugee camps on the Thai-Burma border, we pray that they would not feel that they are alone. May they be aware that we share a common faith, a love of our Savior. Answer the prayers of your people who are facing oppression in Burma and in Ukraine, as you heard and answered the prayers of the Hebrew people enslaved in Egypt. We pray for a more just society in which all citizens can live in freedom from fear, discrimination, and the continuing effects of racism. Be near members of this congregation facing difficult medical situations and choices. Be with members of this congregation who are dealing with broken and hurting relationships. Be near members of this congregation who are facing challenges and insecurities, financially, socially, housing. Lord, there are so many things that are difficult in these already difficult times. Thank you for bringing us through these difficult two years of COVID-19. Help us to continue to make wise decisions that will keep us safe. Help us to resume more normal lives soon. Thank you for the life-saving vaccines and those who have worked so hard and tirelessly, self-sacrificially, that we may be healthy. May we not grow weary of doing the right thing. Bless the students studying these two weeks at the Karen Baptist Theological School. And in this season of Lent, may we turn away from distraction and pay attention to what you would have us do. Please join me in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. Our scripture today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 3 and 8 to 12. The Lord says, all you who are thirsty, come and drink. Those of you who do not have money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend your money on something that is not real food? Why work for something that doesn't really satisfy you? Listen closely to me and you will eat what is good. Your soul will enjoy the rich food that satisfies. Come to me and listen. Listen to me so you may live. The Lord says, my thoughts are not like your thoughts, and your ways are not like my ways. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. 
Rain and snow fall from the sky and don't return without watering the ground. They cause the plants to sprout and grow, making seeds for the farmer and bread for the people. The same thing is true of the words I speak. They will not return to me empty. They make the things happen that I want to happen, and they succeed in doing what I send them to do. So you will go out with joy and be led out in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees in the fields will clap their hands. Amen. Today is the third Sunday in Lent, that period of 40 days of preparation, of fasting and repentance as we journey toward Easter. And yet right in the middle of this time of fasting, we are given this beautiful scripture inviting us to a feast of all things, asking us to come and share in the richest of foods, all freely given if we will only come and answer God's invitation. It seems kind of strange. We feel like we should be fasting instead of feasting. And this scripture is so joyous during a time when maybe we feel like we should be serious and somber. What's going on here? But of course, I have a tendency to forget that Lent isn't exactly 40 days long. It's actually the 40 days before Easter, not counting Sundays. Because Sunday is the Lord's Day, a day to be celebrated, a day to put aside fasting and to feast, even during Lent. But even given all that, it still feels like there's something else going on in this scripture, some message that we should pay attention to about the possibility of joy and feasting, even in the middle of Lent. And when this scripture begins, if first it seems like Isaiah is just talking about some kind of marvelous free buffet hosted by God, where we're invited to share in all of these rich foods, but as we listen, we begin to realize that it's much more than that. What is being offered here is not just food, but spiritual food. Food that actually satisfies our souls and the hunger we have for God. You know, when you think about it, the Bible is actually full of food both real food and spiritual food. And the amazing thing is that oftentimes it's food that's a little bit of both, real food and spiritual food at the same time. I think of God sending the people manna to eat in the wilderness. And even though they had never seen this stuff before, when they tasted it, they found that it was so good and sweet. But this food also taught the people to trust in God and to obey God's commands. I think about Elijah out in the wilderness running for his life to escape from Queen Jezebel and how God sent an angel to him who gave Elijah fresh bread that the angel baked over the coals. And how that bread gave Elijah the strength to continue his journey and then to meet God on God's holy mountain. And then I think about Jesus feeding the 5,000 out in a deserted place where there didn't seem to be any food. But Jesus took that little bread that they had, 
and he thanked God for it and blessed it. And the people ate and were satisfied. And they learned that God could provide for them, not just enough, but more than enough. And when we think of all those stories, it makes us realize that maybe our scripture from Isaiah today really is a scripture for Lent. Because in all of these stories, the people were in the wilderness. They were in places marked by hunger and emptiness. And yet they're in the wilderness, in the middle of their hunger and their emptiness, in the middle of their struggles and their uncertainty, God invited them to be satisfied, to be full. And of course, when we think of the wilderness and bread, we can't help but be reminded of Jesus when he was tempted after spending 40 days in the wilderness. The, de the devil came to Jesus in all his hunger and weakness and said, if you are the son of God, tell this rock to become bread. Tempting Jesus to use his power to selfishly satisfy his personal hunger. But instead, Jesus replied to him, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. With these words, Jesus was actually quoting Moses, who was reminding the people of how God had tested them in the wilderness in order to see what was in their hearts and to teach them to trust. So we see that often it is in these times of hunger and testing and emptiness that God invites us to a feast. A feast not just of bread alone, a feast not just for our empty stomachs, but a feast for our souls. And Isaiah tells us that the way we do this, the way we find this feast for our souls is to listen. Listen to the word of God speaking in our lives. He says, listen closely to me and you will eat what is good. Your soul will enjoy the rich food that satisfies. Come to me and listen. Listen to me so you may live. But unfortunately, I think we all know that listening, especially in today's world, just isn't easy. This year at First Baptist Church, we've encouraged you to fast in a different way than usual. Instead of fasting from certain kinds of foods, we've asked you to try fasting from things like worry and complaining and this week, we're asking you to fast from distraction. And we all know that there are so many distractions in our world. Our phones, social media, news feeds, texting, mindless internet games, cat videos, memes. Sometimes I think that all of these are things that we do to try to avoid having any empty time or space in our lives because we're afraid of that emptiness, afraid of what we might find there. And maybe it isn't technology that you use to distract yourself. Maybe you try to fill the emptiness in your life with work, with food, with alcohol or exercise. Maybe you try to fill that emptiness by keeping a perfect house or a perfect yard or a perfect self-image. 
So often, even though we fill our lives with all these things, we still end up feeling emptier than ever. And God knows that. In our scripture today, we hear Isaiah ask the question, why work for something that doesn't really satisfy you? Why do we do all of these things that don't really fill up the emptiness inside us? I looked up the word distraction at dictionary.com, and I found something that really surprised me. The word distraction comes from the Latin word distractio, which means separation. And the definition that really resonated with me was a condition or state of mind in which the attention is diverted from an original focus or interest. What if our distractions are the things that separate our attention away from our original focus, away from God? Maybe God's invitation to this feast, this invitation to listen, is an invitation to turn our attention back to God. And that's what Lent gives us an opportunity to do. Lent is a chance to create an empty space in our lives by letting go of the things that are separating us from God. And when we finally let go of our distractions, when we clear out a little space and give ourselves a chance to face an empty moment, in that place, as scary as it might be, we can finally find a moment to be quiet, to listen, so we can hear God speak. And the words that God speaks to us are so rich. Words like love and mercy, forgiveness and peace. Words that remind us that we are loved, that we are beloved children of God. God's words speak to us of sharing and connection, reminding us to, to love ourselves and to love each other as God has loved us. God speaks to us words that remind us to trust, that God knows more than we know, that God's ways are higher than our ways and God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So we can trust that this God who loves us, who knows more than we do, will watch over us and provide for us and give us life in abundance. I don't think it's any accident that so many of our stories of being fed happen in the wilderness, in those times of dryness and hardship and difficulty. Because so often, these are the times when all those distractions tend to just fall away. Sometimes in our greatest hurt, when we feel so empty and lost, that's when we come to God in all our emptiness, just waiting for God's word to fill us. I really love the final part of the scripture today. God compares God's word to rain that waters the ground and causes the seeds to grow that eventually gets turned into bread to feed the people. He says, the same is true of the words I speak. They will not return to me empty. 
They make the things happen that I want to happen. And they succeed in doing what I send them to do. We may come to God feeling empty, but we won't leave that way. God's words are active and creative, and they will not only fill us, but they will make the things happen that God wants to happen. How wonderful is that? When we choose to accept God's invitation, to listen to God's word, we will find that we will become filled, filled with peace, with love, with joy, filled with a hope that believes that new life can be found even in the wilderness. And when you find yourself filled in that way, it can feel like the whole world is full of joy all around you. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees in the fields will clap their hands. God calls us today. Come to me and listen. Listen to me and live. Are you ready to accept that invitation? Amen. joy and be led out in peace to feast on the words of love and life that God offers you. Amen. Amen.